<laughs> Let's talk about some positives. We've gotten our digs in now on uh, Orioles ownership. We feel a bit better about ourselves. Um, there <laughs> were some some bright spots in this series. Again, in game one, uh, Dalton Varsho. Hello. This guy stays hot. Hits a big home run. Scoops up another hit in the third game of the series. Over his last seven games in 23 at-bats, he's hitting 348 with an OPS above 1,000. Uh, Dalton Varsho, stay hot. Yeah, also there was a uh, stats pointed out about Varsho and his defense as well as that at this point he is the best outfielder defensively in terms of defensive runs saved. Oh. So that's a that's a pretty big thing. I mean, uh, that trade got a lot of crap. Uh, Lourdes Gurriel started off really well for Arizona. Gabby Moreno, everyone loved him because he was, you know, the number one ranked prospect in the system. And Graphs gave him that 70 grade. So people were super excited about it. And the kind of funny thing about the, the rhetoric around this trade is everyone talks about Moreno's limitless potential as a catcher. You know, he's a rookie. He's coming through. He's a new guy. He can he set the world on fire eventually. And the thing with Varsho is he's in his, like, second full season in the big yeah. leagues. His first one in the American League, and everyone's like, ah, there's no way this guy can get better or anything can change. He just is what he is. It's just, like, a tremendous amount of cognitive dissonance there. But, yeah, it's nice to see Varsho's back coming around because, you know, at the, at the very least, there was always the glove. You were always going to have a very good defensive outfielder, which carries a tremendous amount of value when you have pitchers who allow some contact, guys like Bassett, guys like Kikuchi. They've made those pitchers better. And, I mean, having the back come around will, will quiet a lot of kind of the anger about what the Jays gave up in this trade. And it kind of makes you realize, you know what, this, this did make sense. The player that they acquired is good. He isn't just some scrub, right? Yeah, uh, just looking here, last 30 games, uh, Dalton Varsho's OPS is just a hair above 800. Lourdes Gurriel's is right around 675. So the bats come around when you compare that deal. And Varsho, I talked about the home run in game one, picked up a hit in game three. His glove was excellent in center field in game three as well. He made a couple of really, really nice plays deep on the warning track. So, yeah, that, that deal is fine in my books right now, without a doubt. Uh, a second up. I feel like the last two podcasts, the ups have been the exact same. It's been like, Varsho's good, and Brandon Belt's probably their MVP. He racks up. I mean, he hit that monster home run in game one to win them the game, more or less. Um, he is a lot of fun to watch right now. We talk about frustrating approaches with guys like Vladdy and even at times Bo Bichette. Um, Brandon Belt has the best approach on this team. Like the amount of times he'll go down one, two, and then it'll be like six pitches later, and he finds a way to walk after fighting off two pitches. Like, Man, he's uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of sad to sit here and like try to imagine what the season would look like if Brandon Belt wasn't a blue jay. <laughs> yeah, if 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 the team had leaned into what we said back in mid April, I maybe it's time to move on. <laughs> this guy actually isn't very good. He's washed up. We can tell based on his 15 games into the season. But yeah, I mean, honestly, if um, he's been their best hitter this year. And I don't think if you, if you had told people that back in January or February or whenever it was that they signed him, I think people would have been shocked. I think there was an expectation that he could be like a nice lower part of the lineup lefty bat, like batting sixth and contribute a little bit, nice veteran, but man, like there's, there's no one on the team that you probably feel better about coming up to the plate than Brandon belt. I think the next best two would be what, like Bo and Whit Merrifield. <laughs> Are like your big three hitters on the team this season. It's so weird. It's so weird the way things have worked out. I think I know we're trying to be positive here, but you you kind of look at the season some of these you know one year contract con complimentary guys have had, and you look at Kiermaier, you look at Belt, and then Merrifield as well. He wasn't a one year contract, but whatever. You you couldn't have imagined these three complimentary players doing as well as they have done. And despite the value that they've received from these three guys, these three veteran additions, the team still is what it is. It's stunning that the core of the team hasn't been able to, you know, contribute enough that they have all these good things going around around them. And it, it still just isn't enough. It's, it's so difficult to wrap your head around what's going on with this team this season and why it hasn't just clicked. Yeah. 